This is Seja Water reading to you the Red Pyramid by Rick Rodan, which bothered me because my dad's a terrible liar. I always knew when he was hiding something, but I also knew no amount of pestering would get the truth out of him. He was probably trying to protect me, though from what I didn't know, sometimes I wonder if he had some dark secret in his past, some old enemy following him. Maybe, but the idea seemed ridiculous. Dad was just an archaeologist. The other thing that troubled me, Dad was clenching his work bag. Usually he does that. It means when we're in danger. Like the time gunmen stormed our hotel in Cario, I heard uh, shots coming from the lobby and ran downstairs to check on my dad. By the time I got there, he was just calmly sipping up his work bag while three unconscious gunmen hung, their, hung by their feet from the candelier, their robes falling over their heads so you could see their boxer shorts. Dad claimed not to have witnessed anything, and in the end, the police blame a freak challenger malfunction. Another time, we got caught in a riot in Paris. My dad found the nearest parked car, pushed me into the back seat, and told me to stay down. Mm -hmm. I pressed myself against the floorboards and kept my eyes shut tight. Mm -hmm. I could hear dad in the driver's seat, rumbling his bag, mumbling something to himself while the mob yelled and destroyed things outside. Mm -hmm. A few minutes later, he told me it was safe to get up. Every other car on the block has been overturned and set on fire. Our car has been freshly washed and polished, and several 20 euro notes had been tucked under the windshield wipers. Anyway, I come to respect the bag. It was our good luck charm. But when my dad kept it closed, it means we were going to need good luck. We drove through the city center, heading east toward my grandparents' flat. We passed the golden gates of Buckingham Palace, the big stone column in Trafalgar Square. London is a pretty cool place, but after you traveled for so long, all cities began starts to blend together. Other kids I met sometimes says, Wow, you're lucky you get to travel so much. But it's not like we spend our time sightseeing or have a lot of money to travel in style. We stayed in some pretty rough places, and we hardly ever stay anywhere longer than a few days. Most of the time, it feels like we're fugitives rather than tourists. I mean, you wouldn't think my dad's work was dangerous. He does lectures on topics like, can Egypt... And magic really kill you and favorite punishments in the Egypt underworld and other stuff most people wouldn't care about but like I said there's that other side to him he's always very cautious checking every hotel room before he lets me walk into it he'll dart into a museum to see some artifacts takes a few notes and rush out again like he's afraid to be caught on the security cameras. One time when I was younger, we raced across the Charles de Gaulle airport to catch a last minute flight and dad didn't relax until the plane was off the ground. I asked him point blank what he was running for and he looked at me like I just pulled a pin out of a grenade. For a second, I was scared he might actually tell me the tune. Then he said, Carter, it's nothing, as if nothing were the most terrible thing in the world. After that, I decided maybe it was better not to ask questions. My grandparents, the Fouts, live in a housing development near Canary Wharf, right on the banks of the city Thames. The taxi let us off at a curb, and my dad asked the driver to wait. We were halfway up the walk when dad froze. He turned and looked behind us. What? I asked. Then I saw the man in trench coat. He was across the street, leaning against a big dead tree. He was barrel shaped, with skin the color of rose coffee. His coat and black pincer suit looked look expensive. He had long braided hair and wore a black feather pulled down low 
over his dark round glasses. He reminded me of a jazz musician, the kind my dad would always drag me to see in a concert. Even though I couldn't see his eyes, I got the impression he was watching us. He might be an old friend or college of dad's. No matter where we went, dad was always running into people he knew. But it didn't seem that the guy was waiting here, outside my grandparents, and he didn't look happy. Carter, my dad said, go on ahead. But get your sister. I'll meet you back at the taxi. He crossed the street toward the man in the trench coat, which left me with two choices. Follow my dad and see what was going on, or do what I was told. I decided on the slightly less dangerous path. I went to retrieve my sister. Before I could even knock, Sadie opened the door. Late as usual, she said. She was holding her cat, Muffin, who'd been a going away gift from dad six years before. Muffin never seemed to get older or bigger. She had fuzzy yellow and black fur like a miniature leopard, alert yellow eyes, and pointy ears that were too tall for her head. A silver Egyptian pendant dangled from her collar. She didn't look anything like a muffin, but Sadie had been little when she named her, so I guess she have to cut her some slack. Sadie hadn't changed much either since last summer. As I'm recording this, she's standing next to me, glaring. So I better be careful how I describe her. You would never guess she's my sister. First of all, she's been living in England so long, she has a British accent. Second, she takes after her mom, who was white. So Sadie's skin is much lighter than mine. She was treated caram male colored hair, not exactly blonde, but not brown, which usually dyes with streaks of bright colors. The day it had red streaks down the left side, her eyes are blue, I'm serious, blue eyes, just like her mom's. She's only 12, but she's exactly as tall as me, which is really annoying. She was chewing gum as usual, dressed for her day out with dad in buttered jeans, a leather jacket, and combat boots. Like she was going to a concert and was hoping to, hoping to stamp on some people. She had the headphones dangling around her neck in case we bored her. Okay, she didn't hit me so I guess I did an okay job of describing her. Our plane was late, I told her. She popped the gum, rubbed Muffin's head and tossed the cat inside. Grand going out! From somewhere in the house, Grandma Foss said something 